Hi and welcome, Harvey Olivio, clinical instructor with the respiratory guy, Mr. Houston and the video camera. Greetings everyone. We are gonna do our competency for tracheostomy care. So once again, like we always start these videos out, the most important thing is to verify your orders. Uh, check the patient's chart. Uh, introduce myself to the patient. Hi, Mr. Smith. My name is Harvey. I'm with Respiratory. I'm just going to do some trait care for you. Uh, make sure you identify the patient. Can I check your armband? Okay. What's your date of birth? Okay. Thank you very much. So also have your PPE on. So <clears throat> whatever PPE required, I would have to put that on. For this video presentation, just demonstration, we're going to just pretend we have it on. Okay, after I introduce, after I um, get all my equipment together, I'll go over it with you shortly. I'm also going to take my stethoscope and listen to his lungs. If he needs any type of suctioning, I would go ahead and suction. Okay, um, just to show you our kit that we have, every facility has its own little type of kit. This is the one that we currently have. This is a tracheostomy kit. It does have sterile gloves. So I'm just going to show you a few of the pieces. We've got extra T gauze, pipette, more T gauze. Um, we do have a trach tie, but I have a different one that I prefer over the string one. Uh, we have a paper towel or a couple paper towels. Uh, we have some Q-tips. We have our sterile gloves. We have tweezers in case we need to tweezers. Another pipette cleaner, different style. We have Q-tips. Uh, and then we have the gloves for sterile process gloves. And then some come with different basins. If you um, see, as you can see, we don't have a basin, but you can use this container as your basin. And that's probably what I'll do too. So after I get everything ready, um, I'm gonna go ahead and have some suction equipment stand by just in case I need it. So if I had to suction my patient, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Ballard. This is a trach Ballard. If I needed to suction, I would go ahead and suction. This will be hooked up to my suction tubing. If I need to suction orally, I have my Yonkar ready too. And then I also have supplemental oxygen in the event that my patient needs a little break or needs some oxygen. I've got a trach collar uh, with a venti uh, setup and it's just on two liters, 24%, and it's just in case my patient needs some oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over everything with you. Um, now that I have all my supplies ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So on our lab competency, it recommends that we take out the inner cannula and clean it and reinsert it. I would recommend that you dispose of it and just put a new one. Um, usually the hospitals and facilities carry boxes of these particular ones. Uh, this one happens to be a Portex 7 trach. And the inner cannula, to take it out, if you're gonna take it out, there's a little ring here. Make sure you give a little support to your patient because you just don't wanna put pressure. Pull it out, dispose of it, grab a new one, and put it back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in. If you stimulate a cough reflex, the patient may cough, okay? Now, I'm going to just pretend and explain to you how I would do this. So, you wanna wet the gauze up with sterile water. Your competency says hydrogen peroxide, but what I found is most facilities are getting away from hydrogen peroxide. I guess it irritates the skin, so they feel like sterile water does less uh, irritation. So the reason I'm gonna wet this up is there's secretions behind this usually that stick to the gauze. And then when you go to take it out, it sometimes pulls on the stoma and around the trach and it can cause bleeding. So I found that if you wet this up, it comes right out when you take it out. Now it is up to you the order that you wanna do this in. I prefer to change my trach tie after I do my dressing and everything. So I'm gonna show you the trach tie at the end. Now I'm gonna take some new gauze and have that to the side. And then I'm also gonna have some four by four gauze. So when I do this, I wet my gauze, okay? And then I take one end of it and I take my finger, of course I have gloves on, and I pass it through. And you wanna kinda of be gentle because this is the patient's uh, sensitive area around here. So when you pull, the pulling um, force is actually wiping and cleaning at the same time. So I would do one side like that, and I would get a new one, wet that up again, come on this opposite side, and also pass my finger through here. And the same thing, I wanna go ahead and kinda of pull 
and it's wet it's got some clean water as I'm pulling it's also wiping and pulling everything up with it now I would get a new one and if there's any kind of cleaning I need to do around it I would go ahead and do that okay then I would take my new gauze that I'm gonna use so this is my clean one and I would go ahead and pass that through on one side then take my finger and pass that through on the other side patient might cough might um, be a little uncomfortable for a second so just try to be as gentle as possible okay now we're gonna do the trach tie so just to save equipment I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna pretend that I'm putting a brand new one on okay so the reason I'm holding this is you got to secure the trach you just don't want to not have any type of secure um, have a hand securing it because you run the risk of the patient coughing or something in the trach coming out so I want to go ahead and take this off okay I would already have a new one ready next to me to go so I'm pretending this is my new one so I'm still providing support and then I'm gonna go ahead and pass one side through while I still hold it with my fingers and I just want to loosely put it on because I just want to secure it and then I'll make adjustments so when I go ahead and put this on I'm coming around the neck then I'm getting the other side um, if it catches on the velcro that's okay you just have to undo the velcro come around this way okay and then like I said just be mindful of your trach don't um, leave it unsecured okay so now that I have this side on I can kind of make adjustments to, to how tight and usually rule of thumb is two fingers um, my fingers are a little big so someone else might have bigger fingers or smaller fingers but generally you want about two fingers uh, so that it's not too loose but also not too tight okay after you're done if the patient needs any supplemental oxygen uh, you would go ahead and provide it um, now we have the new dressing we want to go ahead and auscultate the chest make sure we have good lung sounds if they need any type of additional oxygen we would provide it you would thank the patient clean up your mess and then uh, go ahead and document everything and then also make sure that you provide the call light to the patient and ask them if they need anything else before you leave so I would make sure that they have the call light next and that they know how to operate it thank you and have a wonderful day